We happen to be in a profession in which everything is temporary. You know, everything grows, changes, it doesn't stay still for one minute. And so we sort of have in our genetic makeup, you know, to consider that everything is transitory. We often say that we don't really design a landscape and make a set piece so much as we set a landscape in motion. So you start something and you know that it will unfurl over time, you know that it will change over time. The most disappointing day of any landscape architecture project is the day it opens to the public because the plants are tiny, everything looks, looks like mulch, mulch and masonry, and there's no immersive quality to the landscape that you create. As the planting moves in and takes force and takes volume, then you've got an evolving sculpture. You've got a piece that's changing. It's changing with light, it's changing with time, and which means as people walk through it, there's a constant discovery. I think with architecture, it's a very different thing. The building is perfect the day it's finished. And then people move in and things change and they make their own additions. They want their buildings to look about the same in January as they look in July. <laughs> Whereas I love the fact that those seed heads in the snow in the winter versus those tassels waving in you know late summer. It's, it's just that the idea of those changes are so wonderful that you get in landscape. In a hot climate, we need the shade in the summer, but in the winter, when it's, the wind's blowing, you kind of, and it's kind of cold out, you really are glad the leaves are gone and the sun's coming in at that low angle into your room. But in the spring, when everything comes alive and the landscape transforms and the bulbs come up and things green up and the little leaves come out, it's gorgeous. And then the fall, who doesn't love autumn? There's the color, the crispness in the air, and then the landscape changes. The air is different, the quality of the light. And, and these are things that buildings don't do. It is quite something to be a landscape architect and inspire a level of patience, you know, to really tell folks that this is going to take decades, but you have the great opportunity to watch this grow and mature. You get to set it in motion. And more and more, I think we're all trying to build into projects the possibility for adjustments and for some flexibility in how it's going to be used, what kind of uh, maintenance uh, regimes will be possible. And those may change over time. There may be more money, there may be less money. We run into this a lot in these public-private partnerships, is finding a way to get beyond the opening day, because everybody's excited to contribute to build something that you can see. And, show to their friends, uh, but they're not very excited about contributing money to mow the lawn two years later or to uh, operate events and things like that. Maintenance is a critical aspect of every landscape, obviously, because you are dealing with a living system, and that living system is subject to inclement weather, to weather disasters, to floods and storms. But it's also a living and growing organism that you can't always control. So maintenance and the maintenance dialogue has to begin at the first day of design. Maintenance is also an ongoing dialogue. We have clients that we've been working with for 15 years, where the project was essentially complete long ago, but we continue a conversation about sustainable maintenance practices. This kind of thinking has got to become basic training for any project going forward. It's almost kind of arrogant to think that you know everything in a certain moment and you can just define it right there and it should be maintained that way forever. Part of being a landscape architect that you cannot predict the future and you cannot know when a building transforms into another usage what that plaza in front of it's going to do or how it's going to change. I think that having this kind of modernist vision of one thing and only one thing is a risky proposition. Cities are organic beings and they're constantly transforming. 